Another one about spouses. How does someone know that this is the right spouse for you even when you are young, right? You know what? You will never know completely with 100% certainty that this is the right spouse and it's going to work. Sometimes we are, we are quite confident that this is the right spouse. Allah might put a feeling, you might have a good feeling, you might get married and things will go wrong. It all has to do with your closeness to Allah. If you happen to have the same focus in life, I want to please Allah, you want to please Allah. I am ready to sacrifice and you are ready to sacrifice. The marriage will work. It's the right spouse. People think, ah, I saw a pretty girl. Let me marry her. What was your reason? She was what? Pretty. All women are pretty in their own right. All men are handsome in their own right. Allah has created all of us with different likes and tastes. Sometimes you see a person, one man looks away and another person says, I want to marry this woman. It's possible. Allah has created everyone with different likes and dislikes. In some countries, they need to feed you boiled potatoes until you are 75 kilos as a woman before they can even consider you for marriage in some cultures. And in other cultures, they look at you if you are more than 45 kilos, they are not interested in marrying. Yeah, that's their own system. For us, you look at the deen of the person, the character of the person. Yes, you look at what they look like too. It needs to be acceptable. If, they, if there is something perhaps you might not really like, you know, and you, it's not like we are aiming at 100%, but anything between what we would consider 80 to 100 is good, is excellent. In fact, maybe a little bit less, 75 to 100. Mashallah, you will, if you have 10 things you like in a, in, a, in a woman or in a man to look for, you don't need to tick all 10. The first tick needs to be the deen. If the deen is right, you can look at the character, you can look at other things. The deen means character and deen put together. Okay? If that is ticked, then you can decide to look at other things. But if that is not ticked, no matter how many ticks the others have, it's the wrong person. Do you get what we say? we're saying? Because initially when you marry, you marry for prettiness. You did not consider the fact that someone is going to need to sacrifice here. We will both have to sacrifice. When we have children, I hope this will be the best mother of my kids. But no, when you married her, you found her in a condition where she was not even fit to be responsible alone, let alone having kids and having that responsibility. So you may never know that this is definitely the right person. But this is why we say seek guidance from your parents. The role of parents is huge. Many of us are not interested in our parents and many parents are not interested in their kids. Have a good relation with your children so that they will guide, meaning they will seek guidance from you and you will be able to guide them. My dear mother, you know what? There is a boy that I see at, at, at university every day. I really think he's a good guy. Why don't you look into this matter? Please talk to dad. Please do this. Please do. What do you think? What? But after you have developed a whole relationship and it is they are already abusing you and you don't even know. And one day you are so scared to say, I, I don't know how to release it to my father or my mother. But we are sexually active. We have had abortions. We have had so many other things and they don't even know. Your mother and father are busy thinking you are a very pious child going to university. It dressed in such a modest way and coming back every day on time. To them, you parents would never believe what their children get up to. You know what? It's only when you have a good relationship with your child that you will be able to contribute towards their decision making. And my beloved children, your parents don't hate you. They don't hate you. At times, some of them can be excused because I know yesterday someone was complaining to me to say, you know what? We still have an old school that believes it is wrong to marry anyone besides your cousins or your relatives. Wallahi, there is no recommendation in Islam to say that you have to marry a cousin or a relative. No recommendation in Islam to say you have to marry a cousin or a relative. In fact, if you were to study carefully, it is recommended to go away. To go further, your genes will be stronger. Am I right or wrong? You know of sickle cell, you know of so many other diseases. Many of them ask, check, they are connected to too many close marriages. It is not haram to marry. It is not haram to marry your cousin. It is not haram to marry a relative of yours. But it doesn't mean that if you don't want to marry or you want to marry someone further away, that people need to block you because one of your cousins is not yet married. That is now jahiliya. That is ignorance. It is happening in our societies. We want our children to marry good people. Sometimes they will find a better person.
person than whom we have suggested. Yesterday I spoke about it, how many people are having affairs. If you were to ask them, why are they having affairs? They will tell you, well, I'm not even, I was never in love with this woman whom I was compelled to marry or this man whom I was compelled to marry simply because it's my cousin or it's my relative or they are from my tribe or they are from my part of the country, etc, etc. My heart was somewhere else. I would like to call the father and the mother and give them a little bit of advice to say, you know what, what you did was wrong. Imagine someone comes to you after two or three kids and tells you, I never wanted to marry you. I was in love with that man. That man, Hello, my brother, my sister, let it happen. Allah will bless you unless the person is evil. This is why I tell the children, get the advice of your parents. If they have a valid reason and a valid point, you must always listen to what they have to say. If they are being tribalistic, racist, whatever else, you know, if they are raised, picking on something that is un-Islamic, you have the right to excuse them. You even have the right to seek the help of a Qadi or perhaps of the Imam of the Masjid or someone else, depending on the community you are living in, in order to help you achieve what you want. Obviously, I'm not encouraging that, but under certain circumstances, it does happen. I know of a young girl who, subhanAllah, not in this country, but the father was just refusing for no reason whatsoever. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. And you know what she ended up doing? She ended up going to get the assistance of a Qadi and the Qadi ruled against the father and he assumed that Milaya himself and got the girl married. And the father said, we are not going to talk to you ever again. They didn't talk to her for a while. The minute she had one child, the child was, had grown a little bit. And one day, the, the grandfather of the child, who is the father of the, the girl, saw this child somewhere. Ah, who is this little child? Looks like me. <laughs> they said, yes, it's your grandchild. Ah, come here, come here. Problem was solved. Why? Your heart softened. You realized my daughter is happy. The guy is a good guy. They now have children. Everything is okay. And Alhamdulillah, the heart was opened. You realized. There are some parents who will never, ever, ever look at you or your kids. They will consider you poison. They will excommunicate you. If they could, they would also exclude you from inheritance against the will of Allah. They wouldn't mind the kufr, but they, their pride was too much for them. They said, why did you do this against my will? Never do, should you set foot again here. What authoritarianism is that? Who do you think you are? Soften up. You have also made mistakes. If Allah had to deal with you the way you dealt with your daughter, you would be the first one in Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. I think I have uh, answered quite a lot of questions. Do I have any more time? We, time is over. I can answer three more questions in Hausa. Is it fine? Inshallah. Okay, let's go for it. Next time, inshallah. Subhanallah, <laughs> subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ta'ala astaghfiruka.